Okay, tell me this. What does that theorem look very, very similar to? Then either f prime, f double prime of c equals zero, or f of x is not differentiable at x equals c. What, what does that remind you of? If I sketch a rational function here, let's say that its vertical asymptote is right here. To the left of this vertical asymptote, where are we here? Concave. Now. Now. To the left. Oh, I was on the right. The left is concave down. The right is concave up. So our point of inflection here, let's say that that's 2. Our point of inflection would be 2. When we took the second derivative, we should get a critical point for the second derivative um, at 2, because it changes concavity. It's discontinuous at 2, but that's where it changes from concave down to concave up. This way, which is what holds right. Right. If you're not continuous, so, if you are not continuous, then you are not differential. Okay. So, so what if you have a problem? Right. Right. And you've got a random pole right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's not where the for a parabola of concavity, there well, I mean, you know, you got like two of them connected, okay? Okay. okay. You got two of them. Cubic function. 
So anytime you see anything about points of inflection or concavity, you should automatically be thinking second derivative. Before we can get to the second derivative, however, we've got to go through the first derivative. So our first derivative is 4x cubed minus 12x squared. I'm not going to do anything else with the first derivative because I'm not asked anything about increasing, decreasing, or anything like that. I've been asked about points of inflection and concavity, so I'm, I'm just going to use the first derivative to find the second derivative, and that's all I need it for. Now I'm going to take the second derivative. 12x squared minus 24x. Now that I have the second derivative, set it equal to zero, that's going to give me my points of inflection. EOI, points of inflection, Set my second derivative equal to zero. While I set it equal to zero, I'm going to also factor so I don't have to write it more times than I really need to. Okay, so we're going to have two points of inflection. 12x is equal to zero. x minus 2 is equal to zero. So that says one point of inflection is at zero. One point of inflection is at two. We want to determine the concavity. So we do the same thing. We set up a number line like we did with our critical points. <clears throat> We're going to set up a number line with our points of inflection. So since those are points of inflection, that means where there is a change in concavity. So I'm going to test points to the left and to the right like we've been doing but I'm going to plug them into the second derivative this time because I want to know whether the second derivative is positive or negative because that tells me if it's positive, it's concave up. If it's negative, it's concave down. So when I plug negative 1 into the second derivative, I get a negative number times a negative number, so that is positive. 12 times negative 1 is negative 12. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. That gives me a positive number. I'm going to plug in positive 1. 12 times 1 is positive. 1 minus 2 is negative. That gives me a negative result. I'm going to plug in 3. 12 times 3 is positive. 3 minus 2 is positive. So that gives me a positive result. So that says that my function is concave up from negative infinity to 0 and from 2 to positive infinity. It is concave down between 0 and 2. So my points of inflection are 0 and 2, and here's my concavity. 